life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello. Hello, and how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I am okay. And how are you? How are you? Let us know. I'm Lainey. I am Marshall. And today we're going to talk about some wintry, cozy reads. Now, I would like to preface this by saying Marshall and I do live in Florida. It is not typically snowy, maybe not cozy, except for the past few days. It has actually been beautiful 60 Mm -hmm. degree weather. The kind where we like to throw open those doors and let it in. I I had my windows open all night last night. It was so good. So great. Yeah, Yeah, and if you're in Florida and you're seeing snow, you need to change shampoos. (laughs) Or maybe you're in one of those places that has the fake snow during the holidays. Maybe. Yeah. So what we have decided then is we are going to talk about books that get us into the cozy feels so that we can feel very much in the holidays. And we were going to do this as like top five her, top five me. And then we came to a realization, I don't really read cozy books. I'm not offended by them. I don't have enough on my list of books that I've read that are both wintry and cozy. So like my list started off with a book that has nothing to do with winter. And then another one, and then I'm like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> so I need advice. Lainey, will you tell me some cozy reads? Yes, definitely. And he will tell you if he is interested in reading them. I think on my list, you have read one and a half. I have read one and a half, and I am familiar enough with enough of them I've watched movies of a couple of them. Right. So I think you can give enough of your feedback. Before we jump into it, though, let's go old school. And what are you drinking? I am currently drinking the Peppermint Mocha Cold Brew from Wawa. Excellent. And though I am actually kind of the same, but not. Mm. Mine is a cold brew from Wawa. I have the nut pods. like it's It's like an almond coconut milk. And I was able to get the unsweetened peppermint mocha flavor from Amazon. And I love it. It's going to be perfect for the season. I'm going to have to order more. It's limited edition. I don't want it to sell out. Yeah. I'm also, because when I'm doing these podcasts, I like to have some tea. And I am currently drinking a tea called Delicious Flavor from Nerdfelt Tea. It is like a psych. uh, And it actually has pineapple. It does have pineapple in it. It's pretty amazing. So I I hope I like it. I haven't tried it before, but we're, we're doing that. And. And then if we're talking about tea, I also have to say that I did get the David's Tea Advent Calendar, and we will be doing that daily on TikTok and Instagram stories, so make sure you're watching that. You You say David's Tea, and suddenly I'm thinking of Rose Apothecary from Schitt's Creek. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Let's jump in. I have these broken down into categories, and the first category we're going to do are classics, because... Not only do I think that these books should be wintry and cozy, but that there should be a certain amount of nostalgia as well, because that makes me feel like I am more cozy. I think that's like a big part of the Christmas season is nostalgia and the viral infection therein. Like so much of what we think of as Christmas has just been handed down to us as this is what Christmas is mm-hmm. from the previous generation. So we're running off the nostalgia from the last group. Right. Yes. Nostalgia should totally be a big part of Christmas. Book. It really should. Yeah. So let's do number five on my classics list. It is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. And you're going to say it lately. This is like your favorite, one of your favorite series of all time. Why is it not number one on your classic list? Well... While I do believe that it is a great book and a cozy read, it's not necessarily everything that is holidays and Christmas. So I put it at the bottom. But the reason why I chose this one is because of the Yule Ball. And it is just so, like, lovely, you know, how it's the holidays and it's kind of snowy and everybody gets dressed up and they dance. And I just feel like it's so great. Obviously, the book is huge. It's a chunky Mm -hmm. book. 
That's my new term, by the way. Chunky is when the, the, when the books are very big. <laughs> the chunky book. So that is my number five. Okay. I've already read this one. Right. I've read through all of the Harry Potters, so that, that almost doesn't count. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they all have a little bit of Christmas in them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it, it's almost a t-ball there. Right, but... exactly. My number four is Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I chose this one because it is the book in which they meet Santa Claus. It's not really the same that you would think, you know, of him coming on his reindeer and his sleigh in the snow. It's not really like that. And and it's not the only part of the book, but I had the entire series when I was growing up. And when they meet Santa, it's not snowing. It's very much like dirt, flatlands, etc. And uprides this dude on like a sleigh with I can't remember if he has like one horse or one reindeer I can't remember but it's very magical anyway so they meet him and they talk to him and it's it's pretty cute so I thought perfect perfect kind of cozy yet not necessarily snowy Hmm. holiday story I'm gonna tell you I probably would not read this just gonna be honest and it's not necessarily because I feel like the series is bad but Corey has been going through the little house on the prairie television series on his own he loves that thing And unfortunately, every time he has it on, I have to work very hard not to look at it or I will just fall down where I am and fall asleep. (laughs) It's very calm. (laughs) It's a very calm story. My number three on the classic list is the third book in a series that was one of my favorites when I was growing up. And that is So Swiftly Tilting Planet by Madeline Lingle. This is actually my favorite in the series as well. You might not necessarily think of it when you're saying, okay, holidays, but there is a lot of the book where Meg is outside and it's kind of cold and there is a little bit of snow. And I, I always remember just sitting there thinking about, is it the holidays and whatever, when I read this book. So I think to me, it's very indicative of the holidays i have actually read two other books in this series and one of them i read twice the first one it was a wrinkle in time and i read it when i was in fourth grade and i understood exactly none of it but i had to do a book report on it and i was like um what is going on then i grew up and i'm like this book is everything like this (laughs) right i get this now And so I read Many Waters, which is number four in the series. Five. I think it's five. Yeah. It's much later in there. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. So I just never read the rest of them. But we are not alone in enjoying this. Do you know another person that has really enjoyed Madeline Lingle's books? It's really popular. Stephen King. Oh, I'm not surprised. If If you take a close look, the character of Pennywise the Clown is very similar to the dark force that is within Wrinkle in Time. Oh my gosh, I will never read these books the same again. And <laughs> they're fought very similarly. Right. Like, there, there's a whole theory on how these two are actually the same multiverse. Right. I do have to say, though, that if you are going to read any of the books in this series, the movie of Wrinkle in Time is fantastic. So if you only read one, read Swiftly Tilting Planet. That's my personal opinion. But number two is one of my favorite books of all time. I want to read it every year, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. And that is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. It's also one of my favorite movies of all time. I love the 1994 v- version so much. I also really love the 2019 version. So I think that those two versions are amazing. But Little Women is one that we always read or watch during the holidays. Because when you think of like Connecticut and like the snow and, you know, especially that opening scene where they're singing. It's so nostalgic and and amazing. Especially during another holiday scene where they have all this food And they really get convicted of themselves that they need to share it with some people that are not as fortunate as they are, even though they barely have anything themselves because their dad is off at war. But they still decide to make like this really merry time and go tromping off caroling and with their food and take it to these needy people. And I was like, that's so awesome. (laughs) I love it. And, you know, I never really liked the older version of it, of the movie. Mm-hmm. I've never read the book, but I've never I've never enjoyed the first version. But when we watch this new version, the 2019 version, I'm like, this is really good. I can watch the old version again 
it's not a problem. But mm-hmm. this new one, it's like this feels better to me. Mm-hmm. I can understand that for someone of your generation who probably didn't grow up on it. I, I could see how it would be like that. I mean, if you guys want to know more about this too, we are doing one of our Can't Fight Nostalgia episodes on Little Women, the movies. And there is so many things about this movie that I am falling in love with this movie all over again with this research. So if you are interested, definitely subscribe, follow us, stay tuned for that because it's going to be great. Yeah. The first book on my classics list which surprisingly Marshall has not read, (laughs) is Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I have not read any of Narnia. And I fell off my chair. I was so shocked. (laughs) Because instead I read all of his best friend's work, the entirety of The Lord of the Rings, including Hobbit and The Silmarillion. I haven't read any of the things that was published posthumously, but I have read... My favorite one is actually The Silmarillion. The reason why I'm as shocked is because... The Chronicles of Narnia series is so short. Like, the books are like baby books. Not in for a baby, but like, <laughs> they are, t- they're not that long. You read The Lord of the Rings, those are chunky books. They, they are the And chunk. so I'm like, what, <laughs> what happened in your childhood that I like read, I had them all and I read them all and Marshall got skipped. I don't know. Our parents just, I, I don't know. Dad handed me The Lord of the Rings and Out of the Silent Planet and that series and that was it. Like, that's that's what I read when I was younger. Mm-hmm. If you're not familiar, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is about four children. They get taken somewhere else during the war so that they can escape the bombing. And they move into, like, their I think it's their uncle's house or something. And they happen upon a magical wardrobe that takes them to a land that is always winter. There are plays and ice queens and Turkish delight and a war. And a big lion named Aslan. Maybe that's why I read it. Is I don't know why this also would apply to you. I don't know why. The mascot of my grade school growing mm-hmm. up was Aslan the lion. So that's another reason why I read Wait. it. <laughs> I went there for as many years as you did, and I never realized that it was supposed to be Aslan. Yep. Mind blown? All right. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so I think he's going to be reading this book <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> At least the first one. I would say. I'm interested in this series. Mm -hmm. I just never took the time to read them. All right. Let us move on to more contemporary type books. This book is an anthology, and I don't usually read anthologies. But I was given this book last, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, to review. And I was like, sure, it sounds like fun. When I was growing up, I had a book that I read every Christmas that was kind of an anthology of like, poems and old carol songs and short stories and i would read it every christmas like we'd go to decorate the house the book would come out and i would read it so i think that this book lends itself to that feeling but the name of the book is called my true love gave to me and it came out in 2014 i don't know why i only read it like a couple years ago but i did there are a lot of really interesting authors in here. It's kind of a young adult Christmas anthology, holiday anthology. If you are interested in that, like I know Rainbow Rowell is one of the authors in that. David Leffethan and Kelly Link are in there, which I'll talk about David Leffethan a little later. This is probably like one of those things where you can read one, you can read 12 and it doesn't matter. But if you want to, if you don't have time for an entire book, Cozy read, just read one little short story. And there you go. Number four is Christmas Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella. Sophie Kinsella's Shopaholic series was one of my favorites when it first came out. I love it purely for nostalgia purposes, but since then I kind of have been having issues with her more recent work. I've been a little bit bored, but I just love the Shopaholic series. So this is the Christmas Shopaholic book. I think it's really cute. It is definitely about shopping in the holidays and mistakes that you might make in putting commercialism first. But in true fashion of Becky Brandon, she gets herself into issues, troubles all the time. It's very slapstick, very comedy of errors, etc. So if you like that kind of book. Yeah, and it seems like this book has a lot to do with like 
also the people that are in her life causing chaos like yeah actually it's been it came out in 2019 so that was when i read it last it's actually becky's old boyfriend and then oh. she has like a, a vegan environmentalist sister who comes in and of course you know she is totally the opposite of everything that becky likes <laughs> <laughs> you know, re recycle these things, everything. So it's like it causes a little bit of stress in Becky's life when she's trying to put on a lovely Christmas for her family, etc. So yes, it is. It is quite fun. My number three book is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. And I know some people like this book, some people did not like this book. I thought it was fun for if you go into it saying this is a winter read, this is a holiday read. It is kind of feels like a Hallmark movie a little bit, but a little bit better. Maybe not as cheesy. And it is a story of a girl who basically finds herself in a time loop. Very Groundhog Day trying to they figure out. They reference that. Yes, they do reference Groundhog Day because she has to, to live the time right. So that they don't maybe lose that house so that she doesn't die in a plane train crash. Is that what is that one the one where she dies in a plane crash or something? Well, the story began because she she wishes to find where her happiness is. Mm -hmm. And immediately thereafter, a truck crashes into their car. That's what it and is. And it's carrying a bunch of Christmas trees. So it's like Final Destination Christmas edition. Right. And by the way, guys. I actually am starting this book. Like, yes, I'm, this I'm, is the half book that he's on right yes, now. Yes, I'm 60% of the way through this book. Unlike Groundhog Day, where it's just, oh, you made a mistake, you wake up. Mm -hmm. No, if she fails, it kills her. Right. And then she wakes up, right, back exactly. on the plane. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but how are you liking the book so far? I was liking it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh -huh. Especially considering, you know, you guys know me. I don't really read romances very often. Mm -hmm. It's not typically my thing. But this was good. Mm -hmm. um, even if they didn't have the time travel element, I feel like the writing of the character has enough personality to it that it's not the same thing all over again. I feel like you could really get on board with Christina Lauren's, most of Christina Lauren's books. Uh, because they don't necessarily write the same thing all over again. So yeah. I might turn you on to a couple other books by them that I've enjoyed and see what you think. Before I go into my other top two books that you should read, Cozy Holiday, I want to tell you what I'm going to be reading, like my immediate winter plans, okay? So I actually just finished a book, which I will talk about in a little bit. But the next book I'm starting very soon here is Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. This is a thriller book. I have read one other Jennifer McMahon, and so have you. Mm -hmm. uh, we read The Drowning Kind this year, and I really enjoyed it. I liked her writing style a lot. And so I decided that I needed to pick up more. I heard a lot about Winter People. It basically is the story of a town with a lot of people that disappear like in the past. And then in the present day, they start to find clues that one of the sisters has vanished and they have to find her. But it's supposed to be like really, really thrilling. So I'm reading that. I'm going to start that today. I also have the entire Dash and Lily series, so I'm going to read one a month. And so this month I'm reading Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Lefethin. We have seen the series on yeah. Netflix, and unfortunately they are not moving forward with the second season. I just found out, so yeah. it makes me sad. But I'm going to read the whole series this winter. And lastly, I'm reading a book called Winter House. Winter House is by Ben Gooderson, and it is a middle grade book. And it is about an orphan who is shipped off to this Winter House hotel. And she finds that it has a massive library and there's puzzles and a mystery and it's winter time. I feel like this is going to be amazing. It is part of a series as well. So I am excited to maybe start this new series up, especially middle grade, because I've been really loving middle grade lately. Unfortunately, with my TBR, I am just trying to get through my TBR list. I want to have everything that is available to me read mm -hmm. before the new year. So I can start off the new year with just new things or things that are new to me, haven't been sitting around for a while. So in my hand in physical form, is Good Girl, Bad Blood. And as soon as I'm done with that, it's As Good As Dead. In my headphones, I am still finishing up In a Holidays. Mm -hmm. I have like 40% left. 
but I have matched ready to go, and we will see. We will see because I've heard who it's Ali Condi. Is yeah, that who Ali writes Condi. Matched the Match series. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to Matched as soon as I'm done within the holidays, and if I like it, I will continue on to the rest of the series. If I don't like it, I can just DNF the whole thing, and that clears off a huge chunk of my TBR list. Mm-hmm. I still have Hawthorne Legacy. As well as A Test of Courage, which is a Star Wars. It's really hyped because it's expanding out the universe in a really interesting direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still have Journal 29 to read. Actually, there's something else over there that you want to read. You just can't see it. Oh, yes. Yes, there is something I want to read. This is kind of cool. We won a contest for Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix. And the reason I can't see it is because I've been preserving it inside (laughs) of its wrapper because it's a signed copy and he was doing this through the library and he goes the signature says in florida no one can hear you scream which is true because an alligator got you (laughs) (laughs) i actually just read this book you'll get more review on that much later but i thought it was a good time i liked it i know a lot of people didn't like it but i thought it was a good time so i'm happy he's going to be reading it soon i'm really i'm looking forward to it however even though it's on my tbr shelf it is not necessarily on my tbr list it may have to be next year yeah I don't blame you. All right, let's talk about my top two that you need to read. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. We talked about this already, but we can talk about it again. I know, like, I was watching a video last night where some people have really polarizing opinions about this book. Some people are really into it. Some people are like, I don't know. It just didn't get me. I actually liked it, and I'm a hit or miss when it comes to Alice Feeney, for sure. But it's a story of a couple who wins a weekend away up at this chapel in this snowy mountain area that is refurbished into a house. It's also interspersed with letters from the wife on each anniversary saying, you know, this is what, like, this is the cotton anniversary. So we're going to talk about socks and this is what happened to us today, etc. And the, it's like 10 out of 10 for ambience. It's 10 out of 10 for creep factor, but you know, not necessarily everyone is going to think it's 10 out of 10 for twists. That's not why I'm recommending it. I'm recommending it because of the ambiance. Okay. Definitely pick that up. Yeah. That's probably on a next year TBR for Mm -hmm. me, I feel, because I'm interested in it. It's a good January read, I think, because January is still kind of wintry. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my number one book is Green Glass House by Kate Milford. I read this last year. It is a middle grade book, but the vibes that it gives off are very snowy. It takes place during Christmas where a little boy and his name is Milo. And the reason why I couldn't remember is because I just finished reading the second book in the series, which is Ghosts of Green Glass House. And in each book, Milo kind of takes on this persona from this like role playing game called Odd Trails. And so he renames himself. So I think in this book is he's called Negret or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, during the Christmas, no one's supposed to be at the house. His parents run like a hotel. But it is for smugglers, people who are kind of shady people. But all of a sudden, the house fills up with all of these people during Christmas, and he's not happy about it until he stumbles upon a mystery. This book is so fun. It is so Christmassy. It's so wintry. It's just nice and cozy. I will say, however, having just finished the second book, that the first book is definitely better to me. The second book is good. It's just not as good as the first book. So definitely the first book, Green Glass House. Excellent. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one, too. Ever since you first read it, I was like, ooh, that sounds really good. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of the twists coming for that one. Yeah. I think in the second book... I kind of saw him coming a little more, so... Well, anyway, that is my list. And guess what? Since it's only November, if there are books that you're like, oh, you need to read this for the holiday season, you need to tell us. Send us an email, share at elatedgeek.com, or send us a message on Instagram or whatever. YouTube. Just whatever you want. (laughs) Send us a message, comment, and let us know what we should be reading, or what I should be reading, because Marshall's TBR is pretty much set. Yeah. We accept a lot of other ways of you communicating with us. Send us an owl. Yes. We'll be okay with that. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm good with an owl. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. 
Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Laney on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.